Hello and welcome to Fisher's Class Notes, Unit 1, Section 3, Episode 4. Today we're going to focus more in North Carolina and what was going on in our colony uh, while everything else was going on, on up in Boston that we talked about in our last episode. We're going to continue to talk about solitary neglect. We're going to talk a little bit more about the General Assembly. And then in North Carolina, we're going to focus on Edmund Fanning, the Regulator Movement, Governor Tryon, Tyranny, the Battle of Alamance, and Treason. By the end of this episode, there are four things I want you to understand. One, after the French and Indian War, Britain decided they no longer wanted to let the colonists be so independent. They wanted more control. They wanted to stop the solitary neglect. Two, the royal governors in all the colonies tried to pass laws to gain more control, to stop the illegal trades or smuggling and things like that going on. And three, colonists resented that loss of freedom. They liked the solitary neglect. That's what they were used to. They liked being independent. And specifically in North Carolina, they resisted laws. We've seen this over and over again with Culpepper's Rebellion and Carey's Rebellion. They resisted these laws that made them either um, stop smuggling or recognize the Church of England or pay what they considered to be unfair taxes. So remember we talked a little bit about the Lord's Proprietors. They were the eight guys who tried to control from afar the colonies of North Carolina and South Carolina that at the time were one colony. Uh, and the colonists, particularly North Carolina, rebelled in 1677. That was Culpeper's Rebellion. They were, they were basically angry about the um, trade regulations, the Navigation Acts. Um, and they liked this idea of being kind of left alone. Britain wanted more control, especially when they needed to raise taxes and try to stop smuggling with the French who had been their enemy, and sometimes the British, but also the Dutch and other people the colonists were trading with illegally. They passed the Tea Act, which controlled trade, and they also passed the Stamp Act, which taxed the colonists individually. That's what the um, colonists were so angry about. Because remember, they see the colonists as supporting their system of mercantilism, this idea of just making all this money. Massachusetts Bay Colony, they kind of started a lot of the overall rumblings, um, and they asked their General Assembly, remember the General Assembly is the lawmaking body in each of the colonies, so the colonists of that colony will elect that um, group of people. And um, they asked the General Assemblies of all the colonies to come together and decide that they wanted to act in a unified way to fight against the Stamp Act. Well, only nine colonies came or sent delegates. A delegate is a representative. Um, and the delegates, the nine colonies who did come, they decided three things. Number one, they did owe allegiance to Great Britain. They were proud to be British. Two, they should be given the same rights. They were, after all, British subjects. And part of those rights was the right to be represented in your government. So therefore, three, the colonists felt like they shouldn't have to pay individual taxes without their consent or representation, that they didn't have representation in, in uh, Parliament. And of course, Parliament views this as treason, the idea of betraying your country, or in this case, Great Britain. So meanwhile in North Carolina, at the same time that the Stamp Act is going on, in fact the exact same year in 1765, a new royal governor is appointed, Governor Tryon. Now he had been a military hero, particularly in the French and Indian War, except he was fighting back in, um, in uh, what would be, what is France. He was fighting in France. Uh, he actually got wounded while fighting, so he was a war hero of the Seven Years' War. Um, so he sent, he's a military hero, military guy. Of course, this means that he believes in order. He believes in obedience. He believes in following the chain of command. And he seems like the perfect guy to be sent to one of these colonies and put order, put them in order. So he is sent to North Carolina. He becomes the royal governor of North Carolina. And he views all this uh, protest against the Stamp Act as treason. In fact, he doesn't allow the North Carolina colonies to even send a delegate. That's why they are one of the um, four colonies that, that did not send a delegate to the Stamp Act Congress. However, he did think that it was kind of unfair and he even thought about like paying the taxes for his colonists. Um, 
you know, to, to kind of keep them happy, but at the same time not allow them to, to behave in a manner that he considered treasonous or violating or protesting the government. He also passed four major reforms to make the colony um, uh, follow more strict commands and be under tighter control. Number one, he moved the capital of North Carolina, officially named it New Bern, which is in the tidewater of North Carolina. Um, and he built, he used taxpayer money to build a pretty huge palace pretty much for himself, but for the government of North Carolina. Two, he named the official Church of North Carolina, the Anglican Church or Church of England. Of course, this is gonna upset people. We already fought in uh, 1712 and Carrie's Rebellion against that, 1711, excuse me. And uh, he appointed a bunch of his friends to high positions, people that were loyal to him. That's where we enter Edmund Fanning, who we uh, later decide we don't like. And number four, he, did, uh, he wanted to widen the canals to help shipping, which of course would bring more money um, to North Carolina because it would allow shipping to be easier. Here's a picture of Tryon's Palace, not a bad place. You can visit it today, it's quite lovely. Um, and he lived there for a number of years. All right, so many North Carolinian colonists were angry about these. Number one, many identified as Quaker, particularly in the sort of back country. Remember we talked about Carey's Rebellion when they resented having to take these oaths to the Church of England. Um, and they didn't want to support or use taxes to pay for the Anglican Church, the Church of England. Two, most of their money is being sent to the Tidewater, not the Piedmont, which was at the time very rural. In fact, they called it the back country. And three, they were angry that some of these tax collectors were maybe charging them more than they should, were corrupt, um, particularly like this guy, Edmund Fanning. So a group of protesters, um, for, they, they demanded what they called honest regulations. Um, and they were called the regulators because they wanted better regulations. So they're known as the regulators. And one of the major guys is Herman Husband, who is a Quaker. So he's gonna, you know, protest a lot of these movements, particularly anything that he feels is unfair towards the poor. The regulators did send written petitions to Governor Tryon. So they first tried to do something peacefully, but they were ignored. We're gonna read one of them uh, in class. In 1798, when the governor did nothing, the regulators broke up the courts where they were confiscating or taking property of people who couldn't pay their taxes. They, um, and then things got really wild. They took the corrupt officers, the people they thought were corrupt, out into the streets. They, um, so they dragged them through um, out of the town. The regulators confis took back the confiscated property like horses and all these things. Uh, they shot at Edmund Fanning's home. They um, even cracked the church bell in uh, the Anglican church. A lot of this was happening in Hillsborough. In 1771, so this is the year after the Boston Massacre, just to give you a timeline, 1771, and Edmund Fanning was officially put on trial. Uh, Governor Tryon's government did find him corrupt, corrupt, but they charged him one penny. So basically it's like, oh yeah, we charged him, but they didn't charge him anything much. Uh, and he then goes on to have a very successful career in New York and then Nova Scotia. Um, the regulators were still angry, therefore, so they marched on Hillsborough, and Governor Tryon, remember he's a military guy, led, a, uh, led Edmund Fanning, and they raised a militia, a group of about a thousand people. They raised a citizen soldier militia at the Battle of Alamance. Uh, Governor Tryon and his milita militia won um, and traveled through the areas of North Carolina where the regulators were li lived and were popular and basically forced them to sign loyalty oaths. He then passed the Johnston's Riot Act, and get this, it was retroactive. That means if you had done something before, you could be punished for things in the past, and that's pretty bad. But he um, passed, basically retroactively made it illegal um, to protest in groups of 10 or more, and people who were protesting could be put to death and even shot on the spot. Um, so uh, people felt like it was very corrupt. Um, and we'll talk more about what's going on before the revolution. All right, thanks for watching.